Passive investing has been around for quite some time. Um, very simply speaking, it's the idea of sort of like you know, buying an entire market, such as the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500, using an index fund or a tracker or an ETF. Passive investment, it's very, very transparent, very liquid. I mean, for example, ETFs are actually traded on an exchange, so you can get in and out intraday, you know, and they have a much lower total cost of ownership, which makes them very popular for investors. ETFs can often be cheaper than other forms of investment, but it's very important to keep in mind that cheaper is not always the better option. The other thing that investors should really do is not just look at the headline fees, it's actually spend the time to figure out the total cost of ownership. There are a few things that investors need to be aware of when they're investing in passives. A, not all indices are the same, even if they track the same markets, so it's very important to understand the underlying index and how it behaves. Secondly, a lot of times, you know, shorter term news floor events can have an impact on how the ETFs behaves or how it's going to trade. Tracking errors can blow out very quickly. There are a lot of different ETF providers out there. There are a lot of different index instruments or passive instruments. A lot of times they're tracking the same market. So you really need to spend the time in conducting research, due diligence. In the past, ETFs were designed to give access to a very broad, diversified market. Newer ETF products are much more innovative in that they allow access to a much more precise or like a much more granular subsector of the market, such as energy or financials. But that does come with added complexity in the structure of the ETF. Passive investing has been popular in the U.S. since about the launch of the first index fund at the end of 1975 and the subsequent launch of the first ETF in 1993. I think today passive investing makes up about 25 to 30 percent of total investments. This number is growing, however, due to overall traditional fee pressure and continued underperformance by many actively managed strategies. Just like any other investment instrument, ETFs are not completely risk-free. Depending on the market, depending on the subsector that you're trying to access, there could be substantial tracking error or the ETF might not perform actually as uh, the way the investor expects it to. So picking the right market and picking the right instrument within that market is essentially what will drive return or lead to loss of capital. The reason ETFs have been such a big hit in the States, it all started off with regulations. So as the government there and the SEC began to require trade printing, trade reporting, I think more and more people became acclimated with those investments. And therefore, little by little, you start seeing the average man say they know the average price of this, they know the average price of, of where it's being traded. I think overall, as regulations catch up here in Europe, eventually the product will also get to the same status as it is in the States. My top tip for anybody looking at passive investments, cheaper is not always better. Research and due diligence is key. Understand the market that you're trying to get access to and really understand the ETF that you're buying or the passive instrument that you're buying.